Did you know that in China, pregnant women are required to wear special shielded clothing that protects their unborn children? I didn't either. Protect them from what? This apron, commonly used by pregnant Chinese women, uses special fabric that shields the embryo from RF or microwave radiation, like the kind that comes out of your cell phone and Wi-Fi routers. Did you know that in Israel, the parliament approved a bill requiring all cell phones for sale have this label? Warning! The health ministry cautions that heavy use in carrying this device next to the body may increase the risk of cancer, especially among children. I didn't know that, nor did I know that in 2011, the World Health Organization reclassified RF radiation, or microwave radiation, as a class 2B carcinogen. That's the same category as lead. This video is probably one of the most important exposés that I've done so far because the subject matter deeply impacts every single one of us. It impacts our families, our friends, our children, and our unborn grandchildren. It's why scientists with the most experience with these microwave frequencies are saying things like this. I think anyone who puts Wi-Fi into a school should be locked up for the rest of their life. I really do. I think they're not fit to walk on the surface of this planet because they haven't looked at the research, they don't read all of the papers as I do. And by the end of this video, you're going to know why he said that. There was a line from the George Orwell book 1984 that said, the people will not revolt. They will not look up from their screens long enough to notice what is happening. Are we there yet? Today, the most profound revolutionary act that you can do is to become educated on nothing less than the whole truth. You have found a video that will bring you in the know of a very deep and pervasive danger that few realize exist. And unlike fear porn, also way too pervasive today, this video will arm you with the knowledge and understanding of this technology, as well as show you the tools that you can use to shield you and your families against it. Where have you been, Dana Ashley? <laughs> Hello, friends and family. I apologize for my absence, but the challenges that have kept me away are why I have so much incredible and insightful information to share with you today. So although I've been through some stuff, it was a blessing because it has brought me some truth bombs that are gonna blow your mind today. You know, there was a video I did about AI that said, there is a reason why they are doing this now. This unleashing of the internet and all of these incredibly addictive techie gadgets upon us all so quickly was absolutely on purpose. They knew the addictive qualities that the technology would have on our psychology. You've seen Facebook leaders admit that they intentionally used what became triggers to dopamine responses in our brains to make us addicted to their platforms, literally. The thought process that went into building these applications, that thought process was all about how do we consume as much of your time and conscious attention as possible? And that means that we need to sort of give you a little dopamine hit every once in a while. I mean, it's exactly the kind of thing that a, a hacker like myself would come up with because you're exploiting a vulnerability in, in human psychology. The inventors understood this consciously and we did it anyway. It almost seems strange to watch Facebook admit to exploiting human psychology. I mean, pleading guilt to intentionally getting you addicted to their media until you realize what we're actually getting dosed with while we're getting our dopamine fixes from their technology. That is something they'll never tell you and that is exactly what we're going to be talking about today. So to give a little background on my perspective coming into this, I, like probably most of you, I had some doubts about the complete safety of cell phones 
and the microwave radiation that comes through it. So although I have used cell phones quite a while, I never really trusted them fully enough to like put them against my head, for example, for too long. I usually use speakerphone and I've always paid extra to have like a landline put in my house as well for longer calls. But all that said, I did put some faith into what studies I assumed must have been done on RF to ensure that these devices aren't too harmful. Most of the news stories you hear about safety are always ending the same way. It's like, it could be bad, it's probably okay, the results are inconclusive. And probably like most of you, because I love my technology, I left it at that. So what's happened? This venture into YouTube has definitely had me researching and editing videos with my laptop on my lap many more hours a day than I was used to. And so what happened was a couple months ago, after a year of this, I noticed that when I would sit down to work, my mind would sort of, well, first of all, I would feel fatigue, just like, like, like I wanted to go to sleep and that's not like me. Then I felt like not just brain fog, but a complete brain wipe. I could not get my thoughts together. And that is terrifying for someone like me whose mind is always organizing my presentation. I'm always thinking of new things and making notes and adding it in. Guys, that was gone, completely gone. So during the summer, my daughter and I actually got to go to uh, where I grew up, first time in many years to see my sisters and mom and dad. And th there was a lot less cell phone reception there and Wi-Fi. And so the contrast of going into that environment and then coming back here showed me sort of a difference and it let me know, wow, you're really not doing so well on this. So I began thinking deeper about the whole thing and I realized that I've had Wi-Fi in my house about as many years as I have been getting migraine headaches. Migraine headaches are terrible and I would get them every two or three months and it's literally been going on for a long time, the same number of years as I've had Wi-Fi. So that made me dig some more. Super quickly, get through this little science lesson with me guys because it's gonna get fun after that, but you need to know this. So for those who don't already know, RF stands for radio frequencies, or specifically microwave frequencies within the radio spectrum that make up the lower part of the EMF spectrum. Now the EMF spectrum is a continuum of all the different electromagnetic waves arranged by frequency and length. So the sun, the earth, and even you and I radiate a particular magnetic field. And don't forget, your brain works by using electrical signals to send messages. Your muscles contract because of electricity sent. And so that's why when somebody's heart stops, they get the electrical paddles, the EMTs use the electrical paddles with shock to get it working again. So it's just important to kind of keep that component in mind when you're thinking about all this. While natural light is also a part of this EMF spectrum, it's in the middle of the spectrum, the upper scale or the ionizing EMFs are where you're gonna find the kind of radiation that most of us are familiar with being called radiation like x-rays, gamma rays, things like that. But the lower fields, the radio fields, and specifically the microwave uh, wavelengths are what we're gonna be discussing today. So your phone is a two-way communication device that uses non-ionizing microwave radiation to move the data. So just as do iPads, cell phones, Wi-Fi, anything smart, which really only means wireless. So these microwaves or non-ionizing, or especially in America, generally thought to be safe in contrast to the ionizing radiation, which is pretty well known by now to be capable of causing cancer and damage. Which is why your dentist put that really heavy lead vest over you whenever he is x-raying your teeth. It's to protect your body from needless exposure to the x-rays, which they know can break your DNA. What your grandparents or parents may remember is that these x-rays were not always known to be harmful. They may remember, like my parents do, when shoe stores had x-ray machines in them called fluoroscopes. They would be sitting out in the lobby for the public to use freely. Apparently kids love them. My mom said that they would run to the shoe store just to stick their feet in this machine and watch Watch their bones wiggle inside these shoes. Wow, creepy. But most doctors in the 50s said that the recreational use of these fluoroscopes was being brushed off as just fine. It was not harmful. The shoe fitting fluoroscope is not an instrument with obviously hazardous potentialities. It has long been used and no direct clinical evidence of harm has yet been established. Hmm. So said Dr. Leon Lewis in 1950. Given that, let's keep in mind that our government-backed scientists 
and agencies have had a tendency to assure the public that many things were safe, only to find out quite the opposite. Think cigarettes. Doctors in all branches of medicine, doctors in all parts of the country were asked, what cigarette do you smoke, doctor? Think DDT. It begins with the war born development of DDT. This diabolical weapon of modern science saved millions of humans, but killed billions of insects. Man, with this newly discovered force, has at long last gained the upper hand in our age-old struggle. But the really sure kill feature of this insect killer isn't simply that it contains DDT, it's the way that it makes sure that bugs get the DDT that's in it. Think Agent Orange, think lead, think asbestos, the list goes on and on. So it's easy to see, with hindsight, this commercial as absurd. See how camels agree with your throat. See how mild and good tasting a cigarette can be. But I want to know what kind of products are being sold to us now that will down the road be proven to be incredibly dangerous. I don't have to tell you guys the obvious. Even though in America we are considered so cutting edge, our health sucks. Our children are specially sick, allergic, asthmatic, anxious, autistic, hyperactive, and learning disabled. I mean, American children, 43% of them at least, probably more, suffer from at least one of 20 chronic illnesses. When I was little, people didn't carry EpiPens to school. Nobody had ADD and autism was not even a thing. Yet today, it is everywhere and doctors can't explain it. So why this new normal of sick kids? An unexplainable chronic illness in our people everywhere. I will show you with evidence how these issues can be simply explained with exposure to EMF fields. And for those of you right now who may be dealing with insomnia, fatigue, ringing in the ears, dizziness, headaches, nausea, heart palpitations, even nosebleeds, and inability to conceive, all these things are already directly attributable to short-term doses of RF. So even emotional and psychological disturbances like depression, anxiety, even cutting rampant in our young. These are all symptoms that are proven to be impacted, if not caused, by these RF fields. This is huge. It's not my opinion. It's not even hidden. But you do have to dig through a lot of sponsored science, and that is exactly what we will be doing today. On that point, why is the media and their slated scientists talking heads always giving us conflicting information on this topic? Why are they saying it's probably safe and who has something to gain by leading us astray? Well, Jerry Phillips used to work conducting research for Motorola. His perspective on this is very insightful. The radio frequency radiation work that we did was supported by Motorola the relationship was really very cordial and very stress-free but only up until we started generating data Th these folks were very very upset and began to talk about how are they going to handle this what sort of spin can we put on this what can we expect from this Motorola began to exert more and more control over the work telling us what to do telling us how to write abstracts what to say in the abstracts what to say in the papers this was unacceptable. I had completed our study of DNA damage and I submitted the final report to Motorola. They, they simply weren't willing to accept my interpretation of my study, my knowledge of science, and tried to urge me not to publish the study. I stopped taking calls from them. This is Dr. George Carlo. He was the chief scientist hired to oversee studies investigating the safety of cell phones and their possible relationship to creating brain tumors. There are no studies that have been done on people who use mobile phones that provide conclusive evidence of safety. His previous work as an epidemiologist could be considered shady when you consider that he worked for companies like Dow Chemical in their days of the Agent Orange debacle. Perhaps that past got him in the door with Big Telecom, but when he instead started revealing cancer risks, his funding was pulled and his house was apparently burned down. Surely a coincidence. You have studies that show 
problems or potential problems and studies that are inconclusive. Now the industry spins the science as though these studies are evidence of safety. It is scientific fraud. Dr. Deborah Davis, president of the Environmental Health Trust, Nobel Prize winning oncologist with 40 years experience. She helped get smoking banned from airplanes and more recently has turned her studies to RF. There's a tremendous amount of sponsored research by people who are hired to do studies to find no effect. And that's plagued this field in a number of countries. Dr. Henry Lay was initially funded by the Office of Naval Research in the 70s to investigate how radar, which emits RF, affects the health of radar operators. Well, he performed studies using microwave radiation at levels considered safe by our government on the DNA of rats. And after telecom giant Motorola got wind of his findings that a mere two-hour exposure broke DNA in their brains, a full-scale effort to discredit his work ensued. Lots of time when you listen to the industry, the comments is that the majority of data show no effect. That is not true. Mm -hmm. What is true is that researchers have looked at many hundreds of cell phone radiation studies to see what the biological effects are. Overall, they find that about half the studies find effect and half find no effect. However, when you group the studies based upon the funding source, you find the studies funded by industry typically find no effect, and the independent studies find negative biological effects. Makes sense to me that we need more funding towards independent studies, but in America, that has been the opposite of what has happened. Sadly, almost all the research done now is by big telecom, as independent science has been completely defunded. Our federal government has totally shut down all funding for this kind of research, and that's been the case for, what, 20 years. Uh, why there is no funding? For a variety of reasons. Uh, we have a very aggressive telecommunications industry. More later on what kind of science they say proves safety, but for now I'd like to take a look at a small independent experiment on RF that opened my eyes. This experiment used dark field microscopy to observe red blood cells. Pretty important, those little guys. In this experiment, we can see how red blood cells look and act before and after being exposed to microwave frequency from smart meters. Now, for those who don't know, a smart meter is a digital version of the old analog meter that goes right on your home. Now, they've started installing these smart meters all over the country without the permission of the homeowners within them. They pulse RF frequencies spikes several times every minute. Here you see how the red blood cells behave before the exposure to a smart meter. Normal cell walls, fairly separated and looking healthy. So after two minutes of exposure in front of the smart meter, he said two minutes. At about one foot away, we see a totally different story. Sample one, you can see a lot of degradation in the cells. The cell walls have been broken, and you see changes in the cells, which are called mycoplasma. It shows a mutation to the cell. In the second sample, we see a different type of degradation to the cell membranes. You can see a corrugation here. This is called bottle cap formation. So this third subject, uh, when we did her sample, she had to be pulled away from the meter after 45 seconds because she complained about a increasingly severe headache. And here you see a phenomenon called rouleau, where the red blood cells are stacking up. Every single one of these is a degradation. By the way, this was taken from a movie called Take Back Your Power. Please check it out on YouTube if you want to learn how smart meters are capable of surveillance on your home, how they have been responsible for hundreds of house fires. Saw the meters fully engulfed in flames when I came in. How they make our electrical power grid hackable by outside forces. And yeah, the health thing. If you're not looking at the screen, please look now. Watch this little demonstration. It takes just a minute. This next clip is probably the most important in the entire piece because it's going to give you a very clear picture of what kind of levels are deemed safe by our government compared to other countries and compared to what independent science is warning us about biological impacts. The data we're going to look at are all published science, testing results, or public standards. At the bottom end of the radiation scale of what's called power density or signal strength is the minimum level at which cell phones will work. 
Pine needles were found to age prematurely at 0. 0.00027. At short-term exposures of 0 0.05, children aged 8 to 17 experienced headache, irritation, concentration difficulties, and behavioral problems. Point one is the bow biology or building biology guideline for extreme concern. 1.0 produced sperm DNA fragmentation and a decrease in sperm viability in vitro. Also at 1.0, the science shows the following bodily effects can occur. Headaches, dizziness, fatigue, insomnia, chest pain, difficulty breathing, and indigestion. 2.5 saw altered calcium metabolism in heart muscle cells. 4.0, changes in the hippocampus affecting brain memory and learning. And at 6.0, DNA damage in cells. So, where are smart meters on this list? Electrical Power Institute in December 2010 measured a single ITRON smart meter with pulses up to 7.93 microwatts per centimeter squared. These tests are at a close distance, approximately one foot away from the meter, but an infant's crib could be just as close on the other side of the wall where the meter or bank of meters are installed. Even though there are all these known health effects at levels far lower, Switzerland, Liechtenstein, and Luxembourg see fit to set the standard at 9.5 and China, Poland, and Russia, 10.0. This is the same level at which behavior has been altered, producing reflexes of avoidance following 30-minute exposures. A room of 12 smart meters, very common and even a conservative number in an apartment building, tested at 19.8 microwatts per centimeter squared. So how can utilities and governments get away with forcing these devices on everyone? This is how. In Canada and the US and several other civilized countries, the safety limit is set at 600 to 1000 microwatts per centimeter squared. This so-called safety limit is literally tens of thousands of times higher than levels which are known to damage health according to peer-reviewed published science. How is this even possible? When you see this comparison of America's approved radiation levels next to some northern European countries, it makes news like this make more sense. France has banned the use of smart devices in schools. Children between the ages of 3 and 15 will have to leave their smartphones and tablets home. France's education minister says the law protects students. So this is a picture of St. Augustine School, I believe in 2015, when they ceremoniously removed the Wi-Fi router. Even a few small private schools in America have erred on the side of caution. So Roots and Wings Montessori is a Wi-Fi free zone and any technology at the school is hardwired. The use of wireless internet and even cell phones has been banned due to health concerns surrounding that technology and given the risks involving children, the principal just doesn't want to take that risk. Whether this is true or not, the default I think needs to be on the side of safety. If we can still provide the children with technology using wires, why not? Why take the risk? You may have noticed that China and Russia, among others, have set their maximum RF limits 100 to 1,000 times lower than what our FCC deemed safe for us, which, by the way, in 2018 was one of the highest in the world. So what's up with the FCC? In the United States today, the gentleman who is directing the Federal Communications Commission, Tom Wheeler, was for 10 years the executive director of the Cell Phone Telecommunications Industry Association. And now he's in charge of regulating those devices. Tom Wheeler has been hell-bent on getting pesky red tape out of the way of companies he spent many years lobbying for. Getting the RF nightmare known as 5G installed within a light post of you has been his biggest priority. For what it's worth, here's what a telecom fox in an FCC hen house sounds like. Now to make this work, the 5G build-out is going to be very infrastructure intensive and will generate tens of billions of dollars in economic activity. And that's damn important because it means that U.S. companies will be the first out of the gate. And that is why 5G is a national priority and stay out of the way of technological development. We won't wait for the standards. If anyone tells you that they know the details of what 5G is going to become, run the other way. Wow, I just had the strangest deja vu. 
Let us never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories concerning the attacks of September the 11th. Yeah, Tom, we know you don't want anyone questioning the authority you were given to ensure that Verizon and AT&T make as much money as possible, even if Americans' health is the price to pay for it. See, Tom was in charge of the agency that determines the general radiation levels that are deemed safe for you and me. The ones we learned were among the highest in the planet. Most people use their cell phones freely because they assume, like I did, that studies have been done to make sure that they're safe. The guidelines from RF coming from cell phones is called the SAR, or the Specific Absorption Rate. Since the FCC is supposed to protect people, not industries, let's take a look at how they're doing. I mean, what do I know? I'm not a scientist, but I thought surely the FCC would be testing the impact of RF radiation from these cell phones on our brains. I don't know, like do an MRI scan of a brain before and after a phone call. No, they're not doing that. Well, then they must be testing RF on animals to see what kind of exposure fields have on their biology. No, jeez, okay. Uh, well, then let's hope they're testing to get kind of an idea to know what happens to our biology when we're surrounded by cell phone, Wi-Fi, cell tower, other neighbors' Wi-Fi, etc. Oh, definitely not. In fact, the SAR guidelines were determined without actually testing RF on humans or animals or tissue at all. Well, how they test it? I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> Meet Sam. Sam, or specific anthropomorphic mannequin, has no eyes, no brain, or nervous system. But instead, he has a plastic head full of salt and sugar water, which was thoughtfully determined to emulate the average conductivity of human tissue. Yeah. The reason why Sam is considered good enough for government guidelines is because the FCC's entire system of RF testing is based on one hugely erroneous assumption. And that is, they assumed that RF can only cause harm if it's heating human tissue. So Mr. Saltwater Sam is measured for heat increase in his head and nothing more, which is convenient considering there's nothing more he could do. In 96, thanks Bill Clinton, the FCC approves this thermal-only guidelines test believing, hey, it's great because microwaves can't cause harm without heat, right? Even though in the 60s, Alan Fry, funded by the Navy at the time, proved that the blood-brain barrier leaked in rats when they were exposed to non-thermal levels of RF. Blood-brain barrier? Pretty important, no? It only means substances like heavy metals, bacteria, viruses, etc. can enter your brain. Our guidelines forge ahead, insisting non-thermal radiation is safe, even though it is widely accepted that from 53 to 79, Russia was zapping our U.S. Embassy in Moscow with non-thermal microwaves. They called it the Moscow signal. In 1953, the Russians began to bombard the U.S. Embassy in Moscow with electromagnetic radiation in the microwave spectrum. Before the attacks, the USSR had met with the U.S. to try to head off an arms race in electromagnetic weapons, but were refused. In retaliation, they began microwaving the U.S. Embassy. And a huge amount of those people came down with symptoms, including Ambassador Walter Stossel developed a rare blood cancer, lymphoma. Several other employees experienced headaches, depression, confusion, even death. U.S. Ambassador Stossel contracted a blood disease, bleeding eyes, nausea, and eventually lymphoma. He and other employees eventually died as a result of the microwave attacks but the fact was kept secret from the embassy employees. What's worse, high ups in the military knew they were being zapped by Russia, starting in about 63 from a random bug check. They found the frequencies. So instead of telling these employees that they were being zapped by microwaves nine hours a day, they just started drawing their blood and studying them. <laughs> These diplomats were apparently lied to and told that their doctors were looking for exposure to a new type of virus and kept them in the dark of what was really happening while studying their demise. 
Dr. Henry Kissinger sent a secret memo giving hazard pay to embassy personnel in the 1970s. After the story leaked in the 70s, the government put up copper shielding, and Samaritan Henry Kissinger arranged some hazard pay for those guys for their subjectation to an experiment that they didn't sign up for. I bring this up because, one, this is proof positive that our government knows that low-level microwaves over time caused major biological problems. Two, Russia zapped these folks for over 20 years, and we know it took several years for issues like blood cancer to begin surfacing. How many years have we had Wi-Fi now? And finally, I have to ask, why would we think that the government could do that to our own American diplomats in 1960s and 70s and not us now? I will leave that up to you to decide. President Dwight Eisenhower was the first Supreme Allied Commander of NATO before he became the U.S. President. Listen to the warning he blazonly gave the American people in his farewell speech around the same time against the then emerging group that I believe are now ultimately behind the reckless radiating of our citizenry. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Good evening, my fellow Americans. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. We must never let the weight of this combination endanger our liberties or democratic processes. Certain members of our government do know this is harmful while most others do not politicians like edward kennedy john mccain both died of brain cancer very recently glioblastoma already been proven to have a great increase for long-term cell use do they know that cell phone radiation increased the risk of these cancers my friends i think it's important for us to recognize that there's a lot at stake here it isn't just Iraq. Certainly Iraq is part of it, but it's not just Iraq. It is certainly other parts of the region as well. Jury's out. That seems perhaps they don't. In contrast, the traitor to the American people, Tom Wheeler, knows exactly what he is doing. He knows how dangerous these levels are, and he refuses to let the American public know the truth. So yeah, plastic head full of salt water being tested with thermal increase. Slap of the face of science, Tom Mueller knows it. Thankfully, he had a chance to know that some American people know that he is a traitor to us as well when these guys crashed a telecom party and let him know their thoughts on his actions. Cancer, cancer, cancer. When the FCC going to warn innocent children about getting brain tumors? This is a sophisticated, quiet holocaust we're exhibiting. How long are you going to experiment with people's lives and have real safety stairs in place? It's time. It's time to tell the American so public. That guy's authoritative. Why are these causes of cancer You're killing hundreds and you don't care? You don't give a damn. Yes, he does. Tom, you delivered a million dollar bribe to the Obama administration, which led to your appointment. You represented the industry for 12 years, and that's all you're going to represent from here on out. You will not represent the public. You will only represent the corporation. Tom, how many people have to die from brain cancer before the federal government puts warning labels on cell phones? How many young ladies have to die from breast cancer because there's no warnings and they don't know and they're keeping it in their bra? How many? How many does it take? A million people dying? Is that just collateral damage? Collateral damage? How many people have to die? These angry accusations regarding standing up for corporate or big telecom and not the people make even more sense when you realize that the 1996 Telecom Act not only approves these high levels of radiation, but also in Section 704, it says of this act that no health or environmental concern can interfere with the placement of telecom equipment like cell towers. So no one can tell telecom companies to remove any kind of wireless due to health issues. It is against the law. So as long as they stay compliant with the FCC guidelines, which we already know do not protect health of people, it's fine. And you can't tell them to move it. What that means for us, if Verizon wants to put a tower in your neighborhood, they apply for a 
a permit in your city to put the cell tower in, but if your city denies them, and if Verizon believes that they denied them because health was taken into account, then by law, Verizon now has the right to sue your city. Yeah. So according to the act, uh, your town can only refuse to permit installation of wireless equipment for how ugly it looks or because it decreases home values. Makes more sense when you see pictures like this now, doesn't it? And you thought AT&T wanted to give you a better view out of the goodness of their hearts. You know, this aspect is especially horrifying when you hear heartbreaking stories regarding the very real impacts of an FCC approved device like this one. I had a son that was going to school at San Diego State University and he called me and he said, Mom, I've got the worst headache. He says, I'm projectile vomiting all over my apartment. And I said, get to the hospital. And the uh, emergency room doctor called me and he said, your son has bleeding in the brain. And I said, we'll be there immediately. When he got out, Dr. Tanaway told us that my son had brain cancer, had to pack everything that he owned in California and brought him home and he only survived just shy of seven months. August 7th of 2009, I uh, typed in cancer clusters and I saw San Diego State University brain cancer cluster. I think I just, it put me in shock and I ended up on the floor for the rest of the day, but um, 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 sorry. I realized they were talking about my son. So I uh, got in my car and I drove out to San Diego and I went over onto the campus. In these articles, they talked about a cell tower and I went over there and there's this huge cell tower that's outside of this building, which towers above NASA Tier Hall and room 131 where all these kids and people have come down with brain cancer. My son, Rich Farver, died October 11th of 2008. Professor Charles Cutter died June 19th, 2008. NASA Tier Hall, room 131. Lou Terrell, diagnosed with primary lymphoma brain cancer in 2008. Dwight Anderson died in 2008, NASA Tier Hall. Miss Laurel M. Tower died August 29th. Richard Funston died and he was also located in NASA Tier Hall, room 131. I just think that this wireless stuff, we just need to get a handle on it and warn the public. I just want parents to know and I want kids to know that these are very dangerous. By the way, you can search how close you are to any cell tower by going to antennasearch.com. You know, the crime here is that... I gotta move. I'm gonna lose some light here, people. So while Tom Wheeler was Mr. Obama's FCC appointment, Unfortunately, under Trump's FCC choice, 5G, which will bring far worse levels of RF than we already have, is moving along at the same steady clip that Tom Wheeler put into motion. Last month, while the rest of the world was in a tizzy about Kavanaugh, These are live images, folks, at the doors of the Supreme Court court where protesters have gathered. The real agenda to be watching of 5G being deployed as quickly as possible gained even more momentum when Trump invited Big Telecom to Washington for a mostly hush-hush 5G summit. Trump's plan for 5G now is not only bring it on, but bring it on as quickly as possible. And he says he supports giving these careless companies tax cuts and deregulation to make it happen even faster. America, big telecom is the swampiest of swamp monsters and it cares not if your president is on the right or the left. Most are unaware that telecom industry is perhaps more well funded than the pharmaceutical industry and just if not more powerful politically. Their lobbyists are very effective in disseminating and protecting the industry's version 
of the truth. A simple search on opensecrets.org will show you which politicians have accepted tens if not hundreds of thousands of dollars from Big Telecom and then just slap their name into Google and take a look at their stance. Pretty simple really. So what message is worth billions of dollars to suppress? Here are a couple. I'm Dr. Martin Blank from the Department of Physiology and Cellular Biophysics at Columbia University. I'm here with disturbing news about our favorite gadgets. We are performing an experiment on children. We are exposing children to microwave radiation for six hours during every school day. We have had absolutely no studies looking at the long-term effects of this radiation on young people or even on adults. Cell phones, tablets, Wi-Fi, etc. Putting it bluntly, they are damaging the living cells in our bodies and killing many of us prematurely. It may take a year or two, but you can, you can cause neurological damage and cancers with low-level microwaves. And you can make all your opponents sick. It, it's a perfect weapon for a government. The human body, as speaking now as a biologist and as a physician, was not designed to deal with the ex explosion of EMF activity in the environment. And there are studies looking at rats. These rats have an increased risk of developing various types of cancers. Their immune system is impaired. There's evidence of DNA breaks. We are seeing increases in, in brain tumors. Uh, we're seeing increases in Alzheimer's. We're seeing increases in uh, all of the neurotransmitter diseases, ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, um, Parkinson's. These are all disease systems that are known to be associated with low-level energy exposures. We talk about 24-7, uh, around-the-clock exposure, whatever you are and your whole body. You never get away from it. And it seems from our studies that maybe your immune system can cope with it for a time, but it will deteriorate and then the irradiation will uh, definitely damage cells at the deeper level. And the question is what will then happen? As you say, we don't see people falling dead on the street. But for instance, here in Sweden, more than one third of people report heavy problems with their nighttime sleep. And sleep is one of these areas uh, which definitely various forms of electromagnetic fields will have an impact on. Cancer is not the main concern that I have. I'm really concerned about sperm count and about effects on pregnancy. I just got back from a conference in Turkey and Greece where we heard new studies showing that prenatal exposure to animals results in offspring that have smaller brains and more hyperactivity. I think this interferes not only with your health but with your abilities to learn. So real quickly, back to my personal journey. Two months ago, I'm feeling really crummy, closer to three, completely unable to focus not or think, not normal. It became very clear that putting my laptop in my lap was literally, it was like a brain drain. So I was sincerely considering getting off of YouTube because I couldn't do it. Something was wrong. And thankfully, I was led to find out what was going on. So I am now properly shielded and back to work. Anyway, I knew the laptop was affecting me badly. So I figured out that the Wi-Fi antenna on my laptop was putting out this massive dose that was worse than a cell phone. So in my little pea brain, I thought, oh, I'll just build a lap desk and I'll protect myself from it. So I did. I went to the trouble of buying shielded paint and material and silver in it to make this lap desk. But anyway, then I found images like this. Awesome. So that painted a very clear picture for me that I was not only getting, you know, radiation from my laptop on my lap, but also three dimensionally, as well as from my cell phone, my neighbor's Wi-Fi, and so on and so on. And then I found out because I looked <laughs> in this old cool cabin that I'm renting, it has a newly installed RF emitting smart meter. Yay. So even though I'm here in this little mountain of a few thousand people, I'm like steeping in my mostly self-created RF soup. And uh, yeah, it just made sense. And then I just started working on getting rid of it. See, the thing about RF that it helps to understand is that because it's invisible and tasteless, it doesn't smell, you know, like cigarettes or DDT, those things you can see, but something about this like invisible nature of this, it really makes it easy to dismiss. Okay, I'm, I'm pleading with you not to do that because these impacts are very real. So when I found videos on YouTube where people have these RF meters and you can measure the strength of the signal and hear what the radiation sound like, 
Wow, that changed everything for me. And we can hear it. When the Wi-Fi base station transmitter is turned on, it is constantly sending out a beacon signal, 10 times per second. And this is the radiation we need to be worried about. And when we unplug the base station, the radiation stops. You're exposed to an even greater level of radiation generated by your Wi-Fi enabled device, such as an iPad, smartphone, or laptop computer when downloading and uploading information. The closer you are to these devices, the higher your exposure. Here, I am measuring the constant radiation emitted by the cell phone antennas on top of this apartment building. And, as you can see and hear from our microwave meter, the intensity is quite high. These high levels of microwave radiation that are used to connect our cell phones can also be found in our homes. The one that really made me mad, okay? Because I expected my cell phone, but this one I did not. The one that really made me mad was when I learned that my hands-free phone, my cordless phone, yeah, the one I paid extra for for like 15 years, they're worse than a cell phone. And they've been compared by these independent scientists to be like having a cell tower in your house. Here we have the base stations for two cordless phones. This one is a 2.4 gigahertz digital phone and this one is a newer model, a 6.0 decked phone. Both of these phones emit microwave radiation as soon as you plug them into an electrical outlet. Let's hear what they sound like. The current cordless phone base station that are sold in North America are constantly emitting microwave radiation as long as they are connected to electricity. And this is comparable to bringing cell phone towers into your home. At the very least, don't ever put them next to your bed. Put them across the house, or better yet, go old school like the presidents do. But as a side note, you guys, it has been a complete kick to watch my daughter try to learn to use an old analog phone. You would think it would be just, yeah, try it. It's fun. Say what? Anywho. So yeah, on the topic of kids, you probably noticed in that montage of scientists, the many warnings about children and these fields. Multiple studies do show, and it's easy to explain why, children absorb this type of radiation deeper into their brains than adults. Children's skulls are thinner and their brains contain more fluid. Dr. Om Gandhi was one of the scientists hired to create those SAR rates we were talking about earlier. He created this guideline that you see here to show the difference between how a cell phone impacts a children's brain compared to adults. So to date, the only published study of children's risk of brain cancer from cell phone use found that more than a two-fold increase in only 2.8 years. And that is not very long. And regarding brain cancer, when one studies the norms of you know how long it takes for these brain cancers to develop, typically it takes a long time. They don't usually show themselves until people are in their 40s, 50s, or 60s. Yet, in a very not scientific perusing through YouTube that I did, I'm seeing a staggering number of quite young YouTube vloggers sharing their brain cancer stories. I recently, about a month ago, found out I have a brain tumor. The type of brain cancer that I have is a very aggressive type of brain cancer. Last week I found out that I have a pretty substantial brain tumor plot twist. I got some news that is a little different from what I, I, I was told the first time. I found out I have brain cancer. Could this be related to the fact that teenagers are literally tethered to their cell phones 24-7? Speaking of tethered, do you know anyone who carries their cell phone in their bra? You may want to show them this. I don't have any history of breast cancer in my family. We made marks on me of where the location of the tumors were and realized that formed the shape of the cell phone underneath the footprint of the phone where I used to keep it. I was diagnosed with breast cancer. 
Well, I kept my cell phone in my bra for four years, and the tumors were right where I kept my cell phone. My theory for what, how I got the breast cancer was because for years now, I've been putting my mobile phone down my bra. The lump wasn't in my right boob, it was in my left boob, exactly where my phone would lay. In this research on the youth and in rising cancer, I noticed there were several big announcements of youth suddenly having colon cancer. And all the doctors can say is, we don't know, such a mystery. Really? Are any of you having problems with your children, having emotional problems or an inability to pay attention? Yeah, you're not alone. You may be interested to know that a large epidemiological study conducted by UCLA and Danish researchers involved 13,000 children and the results indicate that cell phone use by a mother, not the child, a mother during pregnancy results in a 54% greater chance of her offspring having emotional and social problems. What? That one killed me. Wow. 54% increase of social or emotional problems when kids are in the belly of a woman who is using a cell phone that is messed up and and if the child is by the age of seven using a cell phone him or herself the, it increases to 80 percent there's your excuse parents do it Given the results of this study, one way uh, mothers can protect their future children from the higher risk of this is to wear that protective clothing like they're doing in China. So one thing I don't want to is to overwhelm you, is to freak you out about all this, but I do want to raise the awareness of the truth of the issue so we can do something about it. And there are lots of things that we can do. This type of microwave radiation is only going to be increasing. So the more you comprehend about its impacts now, the better you're going to be able to actively protect you and your family down the road. Think 5G. One of the first bits of science you're going to come across in studying RF on health is its powerful effect on reproductive cells. That is sperm in men and ovum in women. Just to be clear. Another thing I think that came out over the last few years is that the people look at the sperm in people use cell phones and the sperm, usually sperm swim and they swim straight. But if you expose them to radio frequency, uh, mobile phone uh, waves, they swim in circle. <laughs> Studies have been done here in Australia taking sperm from healthy men and one test tube gets exposed to cell phone radiation and one test tube is not exposed to mobile phone radiation. And then the results are evaluated. And this is a measure of vitality, we measure how well the sperm swim. This is a measure of mobility, motility. This is a measure of mitochondrial DNA damage. They have three times as much damage on their DNA if they have been exposed to mobile phone radiation. And then the less sperm decreases in sperm counts in men who put the phone in the pocket. Imagine you are a 15-year-old schoolgirl. All of the 400,000 eggs in your ovaries were with you at birth. They are 10 times more susceptible to radiation than all of the other DNA in the body. And scientists don't realize that. They don't read all of the papers as I do. So you have this highly susceptible genetic material which is going to make your children and you are irradiating it because Wi-Fi's, they are transmitters as well as the routers. They are all transmitting at this height through your ovaries. Her ovaries are now contaminated. She may be normal, she may be genetically damaged, but her ovaries are at the most risk. So when your daughter grows up, and she becomes pregnant and has a baby. This is where one of these eggs will be fertilized and come out. So the real damage here is your grandchildren. So 
you are risking the damage, the DNA damage, of your child every time you sit down and you use Wi-Fi. So if RF is having such an immediate impact on the viability of sperm in less than a few hours a day, you'd think that we'd definitely be seeing decreasing reproduction rates already. Well, let's do an informal study right here. Do any of you know someone with a cell phone and Wi-Fi that is having a hard time having a kid? Oh, me too. But let's look beyond that, shall we? A government report out Thursday shows America's birth rate is the lowest it's been in 30 years. Most of us have been hearing about overpopulation problems in the world. But the truth is, the CDC announced the numbers in America. Birth rates have fallen off a cliff. The numbers reveal that the birth rate across the board have declined as well, according to preliminary data from the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. This is no joke. Last year they reported that U.S. reproduction was at a 30-year low. This year they're reporting a 40-year low, and what they won't tell you is why. Infertility is certainly is increasing in the world population, and this is measured through uh, births and deaths. And so we know definitely that the fertility rate of the human population is going down worldwide. Now, I have to admit, I immediately thought about the highly praised and very well-funded Planned Parenthood, you know, abortion centers, as being the cause. But um, no, shockingly, abortion rates are also down. They're now admitting that white Americans are dying faster than we are being born and, get this, the fertility rates among minorities are declining most of all. Teen births in the U.S. have hit an all-time low thanks in part to a drop in births among black and Hispanic teens. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says births among black teens dropped 44% while births among Hispanic teens dropped 51% since 2006. Anyone else remember the Obama phone program that bought smartphones, therefore microwave radiation, to all the folks who couldn't otherwise afford it? Obama. You, you got Obama phone? Yes, everybody in Cleveland, low minority, got Obama phone. Keep Obama in president, you know? He what? gave us a phone. Sorry. You know, when I tell people this, they usually say, oh, it's because the millennials, you know, they don't know how to ever interact with each other anymore. I'd acknowledge that sounds at first to be a slight factor. However, it makes no sense for that to be a factor if you consider that STD rates are skyrocketing. Call me crazy, but it seems to me millennials are getting along well enough to still get pregnant and that RF is a much bigger factor that no one is talking about. So if you'd like to decrease your chances of having a miscarriage, if you think you might want children or grandchildren of your own, or if you'd like to ensure that they're not born with birth defects, emotional problems, and learning disabilities, I would advise that you take care to remove these excessive exposures to RF when possible and even cover your own reproductive organs and those of your children as well. What seems really clear to me in this research that you must know is that this non-ionizing microwave radiation, like ionizing, is accumulative. They know because there were radar operators in the 60s who were exposed to a mass amount of this at once and then they could not function around it anymore. During the Cold War days when radar was just beginning to be used, there were a number of reports that have been published where uh, military people involved in, in radar work got in the, in the radar beam and got an excessive exposure. And there's some 10 or 12 reports of individuals perfectly healthy before that sudden exposure. After that exposure, suffered from constant headaches, photophobia, they couldn't stand to be in the presence of light. They felt their brain wasn't working right. It's classic electrohypersensitivity. They became sensitive to all things EMF. And so we must keep in mind that this can build up in us and take precautions to protect against it. In this classroom, even though we have the sign hanging in our walls, we have not turned off the wireless access points. And so we see that the acoustometer is already going into the levels where we have thousands of studies all over the world showing biological effects. Even if you don't feel it today, mm -hmm. that cumulative effect on our system over the years can help you to develop things like Alzheimer's and 
autism coming onto the spectrum a little later in life. It could lead to heart problems, it could lead to brain cancers. These mm -hmm. don't happen overnight, but on a continual deterioration of our system. Mm -hmm. And day after day, if we're sleeping with this light energy form on that is microwave radiation, our bodies simply can't catch up. Ionizing radiation is cumulative. Well, this is cumulative too. So the people who find me, by the time they find me, they are, they are very, very sick and they've usually been around radiation a long time, have some type of, of heavy metal poisoning or pesticides, you know, just eating today, <laughs> all the pesticides in our food. They are the ones, the ones with the toxic load and being around the radiation a long time, so the cumulative level is totally raised. There are people right now that used to be completely normal, but through too much exposure to this and also having contact with heavy metals, uh, became so incredibly sensitive that they cannot function in society. They literally have to make a Faraday cage within their own home just to survive. My world became smaller and smaller and smaller until I ended up living in a, in a box. In a box? I lived in a shielded room. We, the same person that was helping us to shield found the right material to hold back the particular frequency that was coming in and burning my skin. It's important to note that these people are our canaries in the coal mine to study and learn how we can prevent getting to the same place. Can you tell please about uh, your connection to electrosensitivity? Then I'm going to cry. <laughs> okay. So. You start off with the crying and then we'll move on from there. Yeah. So, then you can't, you can't, okay, so, um, <laughs> Gurdjieff became electrosensitive in, uh, I think it was 2010, we didn't figure that out until, uh, you know, what was ailing her until 2012 or so, so there was uh, two to three years of just really intense sort of a health crisis ongoing. And she, you know, started, became very dizzy and nauseous and went to the uh, emergency room and was diagnosed with a possible virus. But the dizziness actually never left. She was basically continually dizzy until about 2012, um, along with a lot of other really unpleasant symptoms. They say that it feels like stabbing knives and it just sounds really, really terrible. I want to prevent that from happening to all of us as well. I want to open up your mind to the possibility of this being a very real thing and to encourage you to be empathetic with people who tell you these things. When your kid comes home with headaches four times a week, don't just think he's trying to get out of school. You know, when somebody says to you, I can't be around Wi-Fi, believe them. I'm embarrassed to admit, I had a friend who wanted to come up here and visit me. And I was like, I knew she said, she used to always say that she can't be around Wi-Fi. And, and I was like, well, I, I gotta have my Wi-Fi. You know, like I, I was not open-minded to it. I did not think it was real. So I want to spread this word. It is real and it's going to only become more common because I've got news for you. When 5G goes live, this stuff will start becoming the tipping point in RF for thousands, if not millions of people. And you can be sure they're gonna call it a pandemic and they're gonna provide everyone with a vaccine to cure you, okay? That is not the route you want to take. You want to prevent this from happening in the first place. Let's get a hold on this. Let's learn how it works so we can learn how to protect ourselves. So I'm going to be doing other videos on how heavy metals are very reactive with this RF technology, how aluminum fluoride act like heavy metals in the body, the aluminum spread in the air, the fluoride in the water, the mercury in the fillings, all this crazy stuff. All these metals in the body make the sensitivity to RF worse. And so we're going to go over in other videos how we can detox that. That's going to kind of be my new thing so here's what I did to clean up RF around my house I want you guys to know so I'm not telling you you should do this or whatever I'm just sharing with you what I did and I want you to do your own research so immediately I started turning off Wi-Fi at night this is because as you've probably heard RF greatly impacts sleep and melatonin production melatonin doesn't just help you sleep okay it actually repairs your DNA while you sleep which in turn prevents cancer. Yeah, so then I began keeping even more distance from my cell phone. Now I only carry my cell phone 
carry it like when I'm moving and I'm carrying it I only carry it in airplane mode airplane mode is your friend if your phone is close to you even if you're not using it for a cell phone call it is intermittently sitting out signals to the cell tower to connect to the one closest to you if your cell phone reception is worse the radiation is actually worse so I would use it on airplane carried in airplane mode I turn off airplane mode to let things upload and see whatever I need to look at and then turn it back on airplane mode again um, also of course you should never put it against your ear instead you should use a speaker phone away from your body or use the um, headphones to do it that way next I called the electric company and I asked to opt out of my dumb meter I mean smart meter evil meter <laughs> honestly you know guys based on some of the YouTube videos I'd seen about this I expected a war I expected it to be very difficult and um, I was shocked at how quickly and easily it happened the guy was out the next day to remove it he was such a pleasure to deal with um, so anyway it's worth a shot you know note that there are wall blockers in case you cannot get yours removed there are wall blockers you can put inside your home to keep it from coming in then it began the bigger hassle of getting ethernet cables ordered to get away from wi-fi and note get shielded cables i did not know this at first shielded cables will keep even more emfs from coming out of the cords i began looking to get my old wi-fi router replaced with one that has an off button I'm gonna provide links to some of the companies that carry RF EMF solutions and products like the router that I got in the description box. Amazon didn't want me to be an affiliate, so thank you, but no thank you, Amazon. I'll go ahead and show you guys where I got it. But um, some of these other companies, they've been very nice to deal with. If you do get something from them, they'll probably, full disclosure, kick me back a couple percents. But you know, I don't care where you get it, I just want you to get it, get something to protect your family and go through these changes. But anyway, um, it is tricky to find a Wi-Fi router without Wi-Fi automatically on most of the time. You have one now that probably can be turned off from inside in the admin settings, but in terms of one that's for outside, which is what I wanted, and I finally found one, I'll put a link to that in there. What else? Oh, the more I learned about all this, the more I realized I don't want Wi-Fi on pretty much ever. So I now am dealing with blocking Wi-Fi from like my, <laughs> my neighbors. Uh, and a cell tower that we kind of pick up on here. So that can also be done and we'll go into that in other videos, but you can block this stuff. One cheap 101 lesson on how this works is it basically is blocked with metal like silver, copper, and steel are all really good blocks of this. Oh, screen, like a uh, screen for your windows actually blocks RF. So this big, crazy RF signal I'm getting from this Wi-Fi over here, which when they moved in is when I started getting my symptoms. They had four signals. Anyway, screen from Windows blocks it. So I'm actually gonna get a bunch of screen, like put it on my A-frame roof. So although I've removed all of the RF from within my house, self emitting I am going to be screening now against the neighbor's Wi-Fi, picking it up. And here's what putting screen in front of it does. That's what we want. One thing to note, those little whatever jewels that you stick on the back of your phone or wear on your necklace or whatever, do not trust those. You are still getting radiation exposure to your body. If they create some kind of, you know, sugar pill, placebo, or if they actually act sort of like a mask to symptoms, that could be true. I can't say that I know for sure, but I would err on the side of caution and only work with the shielded solutions. Apple products, of which I have been a long time fan and user, have disappointed me most of all. This is a really important note for parents of children who are using iPads. Please, please do not let your child put that thing in their lap without some kind of shielding or without turning all of the 
Wi-Fi and everything off. You can like download the games away from them and then give it to them to play in airplane mode. But what I learned was if you hand your kid the iPad and then you go in the car, that thing is still irradiating down even when you're not on Wi-Fi. It kind of made even more sense whenever I remembered that about Steve Jobs not letting his kids have iPads. Anyway, one tool that I forgot to mention during my recording, I want to put, cut this back in there, is one of these. So one thing that you'll realize whenever you stop, you know, using Wi-Fi is how much content you're looking at on your phone that is using the data for your Wi-Fi. So suddenly you're going to run out of data and be like, oh my gosh. So once you get your Ethernet cables, this thing is amazing because this can connect to your phone, to your ethernet, and so you can run your phone on airplane mode perfectly safely and not use up your data. Yay! It should go without saying, you should be avoiding Bluetooth headsets, so serious radiation hazards due to the fact that they act like, you know, a little wireless antennas blasting EMFs into your brain and ears. Um, what else? Cordless phones, you saw me toss my phone, although I'll admit that was for dramatic purposes, I actually, you know, recycling it. And electronic center but I, I did call the phone company had to have them turn back on all these phone jacks throughout my house so that I can have phones everywhere which they do for free and then I just went and bought you know old school phones hey hey they're cheap and you get to start dealing with curly cords like like we did in the 80s yeah for people who've made their entire houses smart evil <laughs> not knowing you know what i would suggest to you is that you get a rf gauge to measure these fields so that you can figure out which ones impact you in the places where you are the most i personally wouldn't have anything to do with it i would go to old appliances all the way as long as we can when you figure out the biological impacts that start happening to people i think you'll soon discover that it's just not worth it if all this seems too overwhelming and you have the financial means to pay someone to do this for you, another option is the International Institute for Building Biology. They can help you find a consultant that will do the EMF reduction, an electrician with the certification or knowledge of bow biology is your best bet. I have someone I can recommend for Southern California, but for the rest of the planet, I would start there. The few building biologists that I've already talked to shared many stories with me about how smart homes that they were called in to fix had resulted in huge health impacts for their clients like Lou Gehrig's MS and all sorts of issues we want to avoid. Again, you can get one of those measuring RF measuring fields. If the site I list in the description box has all kinds of products, RF blocking, paint, clothing, uh, shields for your bed. If you want to, you know, like let's say you're in an apartment building, you're surrounded to have these things for sleep, which is really important for you to have no RF during your sleep. This stuff is not cheap. Unfortunately, they use silver a lot of times in the thread so obviously that's not cheap but you know i think getting rid of what's going on in your own house is most important because of all of this crazy stuff that i've learned i am now creating a website that's going to carry some products for kids to help protect them from wi-fi in school that don't exist yet that site is going to be called defeatthebeast.com again i'll put a link in the description box so you just bookmark it now so you can check it out later i have given you guys a lot to think about with regards to these microwave frequencies i'm going to do more details of more videos how we can protect your families against this but i just wanted to get you going here long story short without your health you have nothing the more educated you get on rf now the better because it's going to be hugely impactful on our health and we are going to have to take active precautions against it because this is coming i'm afraid there's no stopping it we cannot count on men and by men i mean humankind men or women to protect us to look out for us especially not those that are in high levels of power. Remember Ephesians 12, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness, where? In high places. If you are putting your faith in a man who has power in one of the highest places of all, rather than God himself, you are not doing yourself any favors. 
I'm all for praying for everyone, including our enemies. But we have to look out for each other to help us through this. We have to help educate each other on this. I make these videos so you can pass them on and help in that way. I hope this opened your eyes and inspired you to act to make some changes in your life so that all your family can be better protected in the times ahead. May God bless you. I love you all and I miss hearing from you. I'm back. I'm back on track. I got my shield up. I got rid of my phone. I got rid of my stuff. I'm ready to go. I want to thank you guys who have written to me and who have sent me letters and sent me well wishes and sent me support and who have just said such wonderful things. You have kept me going through this. This was a rough ride and I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. I don't, I literally don't think I could have done this without you and I really want to thank you for that and on that note I will end and I will say I love you and I will see you next time. Bye bye. Please check it out on YouTube if you want to learn how these smart meters this experiment uses dark field microscopy. This experiment, this experiment used red. This experiment used dark. Shockingly, abortion weight, abortion weights. That's really hard to say. Abortion rate. I don't even want to say that. This experiment used dark field microscopy. <laughs> microscopy, microscopy, and how they can make our electrical power grid hackable by outside enforces, enforces, by outside forces, yeah, that one. <laughs>